use of the Wisconsin plankton mat. First thing you should do is to make sure to close the clamp located at the bottom of the plankton cup. As you can see, there are red and blue markings all over the rope. Red marks are graduated in feet and blue are in half meters. When horizontal sampling, you should toss the net out as far as possible. Make sure you have a buddy present to mark where the rope meets the shore. You should keep the net just under the surface in the Newston so where you can see it. Once you collect the plankton, grab a sample jar and open up the clip at the bottom. Make sure to get out all of the sample. Next, you're going to remove the plankton cup and rinse it with rose bengal ethanol. Rose bengal ethanol is a biological stain and preservative. This will be used when it's time to observe and count the plankton within the lab. Make sure to add a little bit of extra rose bengal ethanol into the jar to ensure the proper stain. So now we're going to determine the standing crop biomass of plankton. So once you get back into the lab, you're going to take your sample jar and you're going to pour it into a beaker. Um, this is going to be used along with a few tools that we have for this uh, sampling. So first tool is going to be your Henson Stemple Pipette. This holds exactly one milliliter of solution when you use the spring to push it down. Um, as you see, Ray is going to close up the Henson Stemple Pipette and put the sample on the gridded Cedric Raptor cell as you see here. This also holds one milliliter of solution, um, so they are to be used together. And then you're going to cover that up with a cover slip. Um, these Cedric Raptor cells are really, really expensive, so you do have to be careful with them. So once that's on there, you're going to place your Cedric Raptor cell onto the microscope and look at the plankton. Uh, you're going to do this in triplicate, so we will be adding 3 milliliters to our total number, and here we're going to get 53, and we're going to add 3 to that to make it 56. So we're back in the lab. Uh, and we're getting ready to process um, our plankton sample. You've gone out and you've used the Wisconsin plankton net, uh, and then we've uh, processed uh, our sample in the lab. Let's talk about the numbers. First thing we need to know is what the aperture of the Wisconsin plankton net is. So the opening of the plankton net, uh, we measured it with a meter stick. Uh, we're gonna keep everything in meters. So the opening of the Wisconsin plankton net is a diameter of um, 0.1 meters. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the area of the circle which represents the aperture of the net. We're going to multiply it by the distance of the toe. In other words, this is how far you threw the plankton net and you pulled it. So that distance was 10 meters. Um, so the diameter of the opening, right, is 0.1 making the radius 0.05. So what we're doing essentially is figuring out the volume of a cylinder using the formula V equals pi r squared. Remember A equals pi r squared is the area of the aperture. We multiply it by D, the depth or the distance of the toe, that's 10 meters, right? So pi r squared times uh, D, um, which is the distance of the toe. We want to keep everything in meters. So write meters times meters times meters is meters cubed. So you multiply this all out. Order of operations is really important here, right? Uh, we want to do me first inside the parentheses. So square this, then multiply it by the distance of the toe, and then multiply it by pi. Really important to not round any numbers yet. So this, 0 0.078539, all that number there, meters cubed. Meters times meters times meters is meters cubed. This is the volume. And one thing that's really nice about the metric system, right, is we can convert meters to liters really easily. In one meter cubed, or a box that is one meter by one meter by one meter, you can fit 1,000 liters. So if you take this number, multiply it by 1,000, you'll get the liters. Or in my case, I just moved the decimal point uh, one, two, three, so that would be uh, 78, right, 0.539 liters. Now, it's important not to lose these decimal points yet because we're not finished with our calculations. All right, so 
Next up, what we're gonna do, you've already looked at your um, sample. You're gonna do it in triplicate. You're gonna use the, right, the Henson Stemple pipette and the Sedgwick rafter cell, right? We already talked about this in the video. Uh, this holds a mill, this holds a mill. You're gonna take your sample, right? You're gonna um, process it in triplicate, mill one, mill two, mill three. And in each mill, you're gonna record the number of copepods right here and cladocerins, which are your water fleas, your daphnia, your bosmina, your leptodorins, and then the um, rotifers. And usually rotifers are usually in the greatest number, particularly in the spring. Um, so you've gone through, you've looked at mill one, you've looked at mill two, you've looked at mill three, and here are our results. And there's gonna be a spreadsheet in Excel um, in Moodle that sort of has this all set up for you. Uh, so again, uh, mill one, mill two, mill three. This is what we found. And here's the average number per mill, right? So average these three numbers here, you come up 3.3. Cladocerins or water fleas. Then we get into the copepods, 9.33, and rotifers were most abundant at 23.66. In other words, these are the average of three of these that you looked at, right? And now what we did is we looked at the concentrated volume of our sample, right? So what the Wisconsin plankton net did is it took the volume of the water in the lake and it concentrated it in here, right? So we need to know what that is. The number of plankton in here are the number of plankton that are back over here, right? All we did was we took this and we concentrated into here. So now we need to know the number in here. So we take the average, right? And we multiply it by the volume. So the volume of this is 56. So then to find the number in the whole jar, this is the, this is the, uh, the number per mil, multiply it by volume of the jar and you have the number of plankton in the jar, right? So 186, 522, 1,324. Now we need the volume of the toe. So going back to our original example over here, we need this 78.539, which represents the volume of this whole toe. We put that number over here. And then what we really want is what's available standing crop out there for fish food. So we take the number in the jar, divide it by the volume of the tow, and we have the number per liter standing crop out in the lake. That is, if you were to take a sample jar, a one liter sample jar, and dip it in and come up, you would have 2.37 um, cladocerins, 6.65 uh, copepods, and 17.89 rotifers. Now, what's a good value for spring? Eh, this is okay. Once we get into summer, we would really want to be pushing in 150 planters per liter. And sometimes the balance of these things is important. Like if we were up in say Bear Gulch Lake or Looking Glass Pond, you probably wouldn't find many of these or these because there really isn't enough hardness in the water to support the exoskeletons of their shells, mostly based from calcium. And you'd find a lot of rotifers, like rotifer country would, uh, would be up there in an acid lake with like no hardness. So that's how you calculate plankton, plankton density. Um, maybe take a shot of the whole system set up there. And um, that's how you do it, folks. If you have any questions, let us know.